Hello and welcome to another episode of the Couch Warrior Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and today we're going to be talking UFC 310. Now, the main event was supposed to be Shafkat Rachmanov challenging against the current ch champion, Bilal Muhammad, who did win the title over Leon Edwards in an amazing performance, really dominant. Unfortunately, Bilal is dropping out. And honestly, I kind of think it might be a good for Shaf thing for Shafkat because... I don't think Bilal was going to be as easy as people were making him out to be. I think that would have been a tough fight for Shafkat for both guys. But now it does seem like Shafkat will still be on the card. It seems like he is going to be fighting for the interim belt. And it's just a matter of who's he going to fight, who should he fight. And we'll talk about what those matchups might look like as well. Now, I am hearing stuff down the grapevine. Nothing super. I don't know if it's confirmed yet. But what I'm hearing is that Shafkat will probably be fighting Kamaru Usman for the interim belt. I don't know how I feel about it. You know, Usman is coming off of, I believe, three losses in a row now. He lost to Leon Edwards twice, and then he lost to Hamzad at middleweight on short notice. We could put that away. But coming off of two losses to the former champion, who Bilal took the belt off of, kind of rubs me the wrong way, giving him the title shot when there's also Leon Edwards available. I don't know. Maybe Leon can't do it. Maybe he told him behind the scenes, you know, I'm just too injured. I can't do it for this and this date. That's possible. But in terms of who's more deserving, I'd be more leaning towards giving it to Leon Edwards. But it also makes sense not to because he just lost his title. So I do understand why they gave it to Usman. Kind of everybody else in the rankings is a little busy. Like you have Ian Gary and Joaquin Buckley fighting soon. And that might be a title eliminator. But we don't really know yet. They're both not super highly ranked. And they have a matchup. So unless the UFC is willing to take one of them out of it, which is possible, we've seen it before, you know, matchups come apart because they're needed elsewhere. The fighter is needed in a different matchup. So I would not be shocked if maybe the UFC is thinking, all right, Usman's on a three fight losing streak. Leon Edwards just lost the belt. Who else do we got? And Ian Gary comes to mind as probably the most likely and one of the ones who's going to be the most challenging for Shafkat to beat. I think that would be a great fight, a really good and competitive fight. So I think that might be a possibility. If they choose not to go with Usman or Edwards, I think they might just take apart the Joaquin Buckley, Ian Gary fight, and they might just give the shot to Ian Gary. And that would be a really competitive fight. Honestly, I, I think I would lean Shafkat because he's the more well-rounded guy. He could strike and he can grapple and he's elite. But Ian Gary, I think, is the cleaner striker. He's going to be able to keep it at range. And if he can keep it on the feet, he can keep it a really close fight. And he's not a slouch in the grappling either, is Ian Gary. He can compete there too. So that would be a really good championship matchup. And honestly, if you ask me who I'd rather out of Leon Edwards, Usman, or Ian Gary, I would rather Ian Gary go and fight Shafkat. I think that would be a lot more interesting. Some other options we have. Jack Della Maddalena. I don't really know what's up with him right now. I'm not sure if he has a fight scheduled. That could be something. He's kind of lower in the rankings, but he does have that recent win over Gilbert Burns where he got the knockout. So it wouldn't be insane if they pushed him up for the shot, but I don't think that's the best idea. I think it's smarter to kind of grow Jack Della, give him some more time to develop, and lead him up to the title shot a little bit more naturally. I don't really see him being sh beating Shafkat. Maybe he can make it competitive, but I don't really see him winning that fight. I think an interesting one that people might not be thinking about because he's also lower in the rankings, but Michael Morales, that could be one. I think that if he doesn't get a title shot this year, he's going to get a title shot next year. I think the dude is elite. He's still extremely young, and he's already so clean, so crisp, and so well-rounded that I think he can already challenge for the title. And I think Michael Morales might be one of the tougher matchups for Shafkat, maybe even tougher than Ian Gary because Michael Morales can strike, but he can also grapple. And Shafkat would probably have a grappling edge there, but not a super significant one. And on the feet, I don't even know if he would have the edge. I think that Michael Morales might be a competitive, if not better, striker. So that would be a sick matchup. Unlikely, but that would have my vote, honestly. If you made me pick between everybody I named so far, I would pick Michael Morales. He's maybe not the most deserving, but I think it's the most compelling matchup. And that, after that, I think the second most compelling would be Ian Gary. Now, there's one more idea I did think of. He's fighting this weekend, Carlos Pratesh, fighting Neil Magny. I know that he's literally just got into the UFC, just got off the Contender Series. He's only had, I believe, three fights now in the UFC or two. And now he's coming up and he's fighting Neil Magny in a main event already. They're pushing the guy. They're clearly pushing the guy. They see something in him. The fight nerds have been on fire recently. 
and he he he's the next the next guy coming out of there and he's just been an elite striker he's super dangerous but he's calm cool collected and he's a cool guy outside of the cage so he's easy with the fans people love him and if he comes out here takes no damage against neo magni this weekend and just cooks him and gets him out of there early takes no damage at all has a beautiful performance gets another highlight reel knockout I wouldn't be shocked if we woke up a few weeks from now and found out that Carlos Pratesh is stepping in to face Shafka Rachmanov, and that would be a sick fight. I don't know if Pratesh is ready for a fight like that. I think that he's not fully well-rounded to be able to handle the grappling, because on the feet, if we're doing Shafka versus Pratesh, I favor Pratesh on the feet. More calculated, has more varied attack, more tools, more weapons in his arsenal. Just a really dangerous guy. And Shafkat's dangerous on the feet too, but I think Pratish is more dangerous, a little bit more scary, and a little bit more varied in the attack. But his grappling, we don't really have too much info on it. I don't think it's really up to par. And if Shafkat comes out there and fights smart and gets the takedowns and grinds him out, he should be able to beat somebody like Pratesh. So that's kind of what I was thinking there. Now, if we're going to go to the more realistic matchups, what's probably going to happen is Usman. That's what I'm hearing. In that fight, it, it's kind of tough. I do think Shafkat should win. I really do. At this point, Usman's aging. He's had problems with his knees. He's been in and out, kind of inactive. Had the two losses in a row to Leon Edwards. Then he came out. He lost to um, Hamza Chemaev on short notice. And he uh, he didn't look bad in the in the Chemaev fight. He did, looked a, a lot better than Robert Whitaker, my guy. So I got to give him credit. He's definitely not done, but he's a bit slower. He's not as explosive. He can be taken down. And I just don't really see where he's better than Shafkat Rahmanov right now. And with the age factor and all of that and the wear and tear, I would really have to favor Shafkat in that fight. I wouldn't be surprised if they opened him up at like minus 250, maybe even wider against Usman. And I, I would understand anybody taking an underdog shot on Usman because it would be a huge step up for Shafkat to go from, you know, fighting Jeff Neal, who is also very good. But going from that to Kamaru Usman, who is one of the best to ever do it in the weight class, that's a pretty big step up. And it would be a challenge, but I think it's a challenge that Shafkat would pass. So that is what I am thinking. Like I said, UFC 310 main event. If I had to make a prediction right now, I think it will be Shafkat Rahmanov versus Usman, Kamaru Usman for the interim belt. I think Rahmanov will win. And then I think he will fight Bala Muhammad next year to unite the belts. And that will be a great fight. And that'll be a breakdown for another day. But if the UFC wants to make it exciting and they've been doing this with matchups, especially at flyweight in particular, where they're just bringing in guys from random parts of the rankings, even right now in the next ch championship bout with Pantoja, you know, Kai is coming in. He's never even fought in the UFC. He's fighting for a belt. So I would not be shocked if someone like Pratesh has a sick performance this weekend and then gets blown up into the title shot. So just look out for that. Thank you guys for tuning in. And